listening to the weekend edition of the Coral Economics Report, opening the show with my friend Ron Hera. You know, Ron is somebody who I got to know probably, what, six or seven years ago, and he has done nothing but get bigger and bigger and bigger in the investment community during that period of time. He's a really good guy. He's a very bright guy. Uh, his newsletters are fantastic. If you don't subscribe to him right now, you really need to do that. We are recording this entire show from the Silver Summit over in Spokane, Washington, and I have to tell you, this is, in my opinion, one of the best shows out there. A lot of enthusiasm, good-sized crowd without being unmanageable. It, it, it's a fun time. Oh, yeah. The Silver Summit is a unique venue. This is a show where you have you know, high net worth individuals, a lot of very smart investors here. So this is a completely unique situation. It's a completely focused on silver. Absolutely, totally. Having said that, Ron, you're probably unaware of this, but uh, very, very shortly, we're having an election coming up. <laughs> and I, I know you don't like to talk politics. I enjoy talking politics. I've made a lot of good friends, but I've also made some enemies in, the, in, in that area. My liberal friends uh, basically patronize me by saying, you know, you don't know what you're talking about in terms of not supporting the president. Having said that, you know, I'm of the mind, Ron, that this election is very, very important. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because I think you have two very different agendas. Now, on the surface, not on the surface, a little below the surface, one could say, well, maybe there's really not much difference between the two, uh, the two candidates, you know, but, but, but I would have to maintain that there is. I think that uh, the president's agenda is very big government, socialistic, et cetera, et cetera. And I think at least with Mitt Romney, he's saying it's just the opposite. What do you think? Well, first of all, neither one of these candidates is going to break up to too big, too big to fail banks, uh, put back Glass-Steagall, or uh, regulate OTC derivatives strictly. So the three problems that basically cause the financial crisis are not going to be fixed by either of these men. So the choice you're making is whether you want things to get worse more quickly or more slowly. More quickly or more slowly. I, you know, I don't know. I, uh, my, my premise is, you know, I mean, I'm sure Barack Obama is a decent guy. You know, a lot of people would say, no, he's not. But, but, you know, as a human being, I think he's probably a decent person. He really believes what he believes, etc. Okay, and, and what he believes is government needs to take care of those people who can't take care of themselves. I'm not of that mind. Well, and it's a perfect system because the government keeps creating more and more people who can't take care of themselves. Exactly. Interesting, interesting point. I mean, if you were to call this thing right now, and then I want to get into the banking situation, but if you were going to call this thing right now, you think Romney's got a chance? Yeah, Romney will win the election. You think he'll win the election? Yes. You know, I found it interesting. I watched the debate last, uh, I guess it was Monday night, and uh, the, the accounts of the winner and loser was so absolutely hilarious in the mainstream media on, on Tuesday in the sense that USA Today called Obama a clear winner. Everybody else called Romney a clear winner. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, are we ever going to get a straight answer? Well, you can have a socialist or you can have a banker. I agree a thousand percent. You know, I, I'm also of the mind, and you and I were talking earlier about uh, you know, what would it take to actually solve the problem, the economic crisis that the world is in? I personally think that kicking the can down the road using the, you know, the, the, the simplistic description is the wrong thing to do. I think we need to rebuild the house. We need to remodel the house. People have to take their lumps, but I think long term that's the only way this thing is going to be solved. Well, we need a new currency system. And Let's talk about that. Yeah, well, we have to do something about the, the, the banks. I mean, we still have too big to fail banks and we still have unsound banks. I mean, the QE3 is basically removing toxic assets from bank balance sheets and handing banks cash. Now, the only problem with this, in other words, preserving the uh, balance sheets of banks, not allowing banks to fail, which, which is what should happen in a free market. The problem with this is that it's actually redistributing money over the economy. And that's causing a redistribution of purchasing power and ultimately a redistribution of wealth for basically uh, two banks from everybody else, especially savers. And the, the main problem with that is that savings is the real engine of small business creation. I mean, at the Fed, Bernanke, for example, they believe that 
they want to improve bank balance sheets so that they can increase lending to small businesses because small businesses rely on bank credit for operations and for expansion and that's absolutely correct. What they're missing however is that the engine of small business creation is actually savings and they're destroying savings through all of this monetization, basically money printing to put it colloquially. So that is going to cause continued unemployment. In other words, the employment picture, I mean, regardless of what the government statistics say, the actual employment situation will not improve because you don't have small business creation and you won't as long as savings continue to be destroyed by the Fed. I personally agree with Romney, for example, when he says that keeping the Bush tax cuts, as, as, they're, as they're euphemistically called, in place will actually help drive small businesses. Okay. The Democratic side of the aisle says you're absolutely crazy. Everybody needs to pay their fair share. Well, I agree everybody needs to pay their fair share, but, but you know, the argument seems to miss on one very important point, and that is the absolute numbers of the quote-unquote wealthy that they pay in taxes. Forget about percentages. Let's talk about absolute numbers. Those numbers are huge. I mean, the majority, the, far and away, the majority of the of the, uh, the revenues for for the federal government in the United States come from a very small percentage of the population. Okay, I think that going along with what you're saying about savings, I think that if the tax cuts are dropped, I think that's going to kill small business. What do you, how do you feel about that? You, you're saying if the tax cuts are, are left in place, that will uh, help small business or it will harm small business? I believe if the tax cuts, the Bush tax cuts, are left in place, that will help small business. I agree. I agree because, you know, the tax burden falls disproportionately on the middle class. I mean, and I say disproportionately insofar as uh, y you need to have savings. The middle class actually is, is, that is linked to this idea of where the engine of small business creation is. So if you don't have savings, you don't have a middle class. Small business is a middle class phenomenon. So this is a problem. If you, you, you know, if you go after the middle class as a tax base or as a, as, a, as a captive customer base from the point of view of some of the large companies like the banks, for example, this actually harms the economy because it destroys small businesses. It short circuits the engine of creation for small businesses. So you don't have economic growth. You don't have jobs. And that's exactly where we are. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. How do you think this thing is going to play out, Ron? Well, I think that the policies we have today, basically, we have direct government control over the economy. We have monetization by central banks, not just the Fed. This is happening in Europe, too. Uh, and we have interventions into the economy in order to do things like support the banking system or the stock market or the treasury market. So this is, uh, these are the new rules of what, I, what I, I think of it as a new economic paradigm. In other words, we had a big crash in 2008. This is the post-crash universe where the three defining factors are intervention, direct government control over the economy, and monetization. Now, that could be the status quo for a long time. The, the problem, however, is that in that scenario, the average citizen is becoming poorer and poorer and poorer. We don't have a crisis here in the United States because social welfare programs are still expanding. In, in Europe, they have austerity, so you have total chaos. And that is ultimately the result that we will have here. I find the situation to be terrifying. I find the situation under the current, uh, the current philosophy of, of our leaders uh, to be unsolvable. Kicking the can down the road is eventually going to lead to absolute chaos. Something has to be done, in my opinion. Yeah, and that's exactly, we, we will have a political crisis at some point. Sad situation. Real quick, we got about 30 seconds left here, 45 seconds. Talk a little bit about your newsletter. Well, I, I cover resource investing. I cover the whole resource space, but mainly I focus on precious metals, gold, silver, platinum group metals. And I publish a monthly resource company analysis that represents my own research for my own investments. And uh, I publish all my portfolio changes, everything I buy and sell. Not all, but a certain portion of uh, Ron Harris' uh, material will be published on our site beginning immediately. Take a look at it. If you want to get more information on Hera Research LLC, simply go to our favorite sites section and click on his banner. Ron, thanks so much. Thanks for having me on.